rare earth issue, such an important one. And if there is any breakthrough there, that would be quite a moment, wouldn't it? It absolutely would be. It's one of the chief concerns here in the U.S.-China relationship. China, as you know, but uh, we were straightening out some of the points having to do mostly with rare earth magnets and some other things. Welcome, this is Nitch Mamin House with GBS Deep Dive. In what would be a disaster for the Trump administration's Made in America push, several traditional and electric vehicle makers and their suppliers are considering shifting some auto parts manufacturing to China to avoid those looming factory shutdowns. After the trade war and tariff impositions have led to China clamping down on rare earth magnet exports to the United States. Now, this is one more headache for automakers on top of the 50% steel and aluminum tariffs which have just been imposed by the Trump administration and which is expected to increase the cost of cars from a couple of hundred dollars to $1,000 per car. In mid-May, Ford, one of America's oldest and most iconic automakers, shut down the production of its Ford Explorer at its Chicago plant for a week because of a rare earth shortage. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's not alone. All major US automakers are racing to find workarounds to China's stranglehold on those rare earth magnets, which they fear could force them to shut down some car production within weeks. Tens of thousands of assembly line jobs hang in the balance as these tiny components halt billion dollar operations. In the auto industry, rare earth materials are used to allow electric vehicle motors to function at high speeds. They are also used in simple parts as, for example, windshield wipers or headlights. A number of ideas are being floated how to deal with this issue, including producing electric motors in Chinese factories or shipping made in America motors to China to have the magnets installed. Moving production to China as a way to get around those export controls on rare earth magnets is possible because the Chinese restrictions only cover magnets, not finished parts. Now, after the 145% tariff which was imposed in April by the United States on Chinese exports, China retaliated by requiring companies to apply for permission to export. This they did so on seven medium to heavy rare earth elements and several magnets. The export controls were set for all companies worldwide. Now, given that China controls roughly 90% of the world's supply of these elements, which help magnets to operate at very high temperatures, the export controls have basically appended those supply chains, which are central to automakers, aerospace manufacturers, semiconductor companies, and military contractors around the world. They are essential for most of the world's modern technology, from those smartphones that we all use to the F-35 fighter jets. Europe's Auto Supply Association, Klepper, suggests that Chinese approvals for export licenses have come down to around 25% as compared to before April, and they're taking almost two to three months for approval. Now, in what could be described as a surrender by the United States, Chinese media reported that the American side asked for a call with President Xi. President Donald Trump told reporters later that in his recent one and a half hour call with President Xi, which he described as being a productive conversation, that they discussed these rare earth minerals. Although the Chinese side has given no such confirmation. Trump also wrote the same on his social media site, where he wrote, there should be no longer any questions respecting the complexity of rare earth products and that the conversation was focused almost entirely on trade. The lack of magnets affects EVs and hybrid vehicles much more than conventional cars and trucks. A typical electric vehicle contains far more rare earths than a gasoline powered model. But rare earth magnets are found throughout the modern vehicle. Just look at the chart, which shows that the number of minerals that go into producing an EV car versus a conventional car. 
China has since April increased the scrutiny over rare earth magnets by introducing a new tracking system. Now it's similar in style to what the United States has introduced for tech controls. The national tracking system requires producers to submit extra information online, including trading volumes and client names. One of the major reasons why the trade truce occurred between the two countries in mid-May was the US's own need for such materials. Now China's leverage its dominance in key supply chains to persuade Trump to back down. The Trump administration also faced huge pressure from several domestic industry sectors, including automakers and part suppliers, who explained that the vehicle production could be reduced or even shut down imminently without more rare earth components from China. As part of that 90-day tariff truce agreement, China was set to ease export controls on rare earth magnets. But frustratingly for the administration, it basically slow walked these license approvals for the magnets. And this is why last week, President Trump posted angrily accusing China of violating its deal with the US. China pushed back at the time, alleging discriminatory and restrictive measures by Washington, including restricting exports of AI chips and revoking visas for Chinese students. I cover this in detail in my last vlog, but I will put a link to it in the description. Interestingly, on the Chinese student visas, Trump did have something to say on that as well, saying they are fantastic, we love them, we want them to come, we will just be checking who is coming. On the export curbs, China has defended them as being non-discriminatory and not targeted at any specific country. The foreign ministry told media on Friday that China was ready for talks on the issue with relevant nations who were interested, and they have started discussions with the EU. As exports of rare earth magnets have virtually ground to a halt, car makers are facing hard decisions about whether they can continue to keep their plants operating. The problem isn't unique only to the United States. The European Association of Automotive Suppliers has said that several production lines in plants across Europe have already closed, with many more impacted in the coming weeks as inventories of these minerals decrease. Now, the importance of these magnets can be gleaned from the fact that manufacturers are actually considering shipping unfinished parts halfway across the world so that they could add in a minuscule size magnet installed, despite the fact that it will add to the cost and the time it takes to manufacture. But the companies see it as the only alternative to otherwise shutting down some production lines altogether. Car makers are even considering stripping out some premium features, such as adjustable seats that make use of several tiny electric motors, high-end speaker systems that use rare earth magnets. They could also be replaced with downgraded versions. Imagine walking into a car dealership in 2025 and being told that that new SUV you want to buy no longer comes with electric seat adjustments or a premium sound system, all because of a magnet which is less than the size of a coin. It's basically a technology regression going back to the 1970s or early 1980s when manual seat adjustments were the norm for mass market cars or getting rid of that high fidelity car audio system which requires a rare earth magnet called neodymium instead of going back to that larger, heavier and lower quality speaker system instead in your car. Another option being floated is to conserve those diminishing magnet supplies is Converting to the older electric motor technology that doesn't use rare earth magnets or does not use so many of them. Car makers stopped using those motors because the current versions are much cheaper and more efficient. Car companies are also looking at the alternative sources for magnets in Europe and Asia instead of purchasing them directly from Chinese factories as they do currently. However, none of these sources would provide enough magnets to support the demand from the car industry. China has the largest reserves of rare earth elements in the world, 44 million metric tons, or about half of the estimated global reserves. Vietnam and Brazil come next in terms of known reserves around 21-22 million tons. China also has the biggest mines, producing around 270 
1,000 metric tons of minerals last year compared to 45,000 tons that were mined in the United States. China mines around 63% of all rare earth minerals and processes over 90% of these. China controls almost all of the refining capabilities that transforms these raw minerals into usable forms. Given the decades of experience it now has and that superior technical know-how for separating rare earth from surrounding rocks, it's not easy to displace it. Massive migration of rare earth processing to China took place over 25 years ago under the Chinese President Deng Xiaoping in the 1980s. Deng Xiaoping is said to have made the statement that the Middle East has oil, China has rare earths. And that wasn't a prediction, it was a plan. China became dominant in rare earths, a group of 17 minerals, by producing them at lower prices than the West. And it was helped by government support. And often, Chinese did not take into consideration the environmental concerns, including that toxic waste that came from the processing. By comparison, the United States has only one rare earth mine, the Mountain Pass Rare Earth Mine in San Bernardino County in California. And it sends almost all of the rare earths it does mine to China for refining. It is now saying that it will not do that going forward given the level of high tariffs. China is forecasted to retain its grip on the global rare earth sector, which of course is key for the electric vehicles and the solar energy, the wind energy, energy and other EV uh, uses as well. Now this is going to happen despite other nations who are supposedly boosting their output, according to the International Energy Agency itself. The importance of these elements in modern technology is what gives China immense leverage over the United States in any conflict, whether this is in trade, military or politics. China supplies more than 50% of United States imports for 19 critical materials and over 70% of US rare earth materials. The United States gets a close to 63% of its antimony from China, around 21% of gallium and around 25% of its germanium. These are key, key minerals for the technology sector. The US is aware that it is in a tight corner with regards to the rare earth minerals dependency that the country has on China. President Trump has tried to strong arm Greenland and Ukraine into providing more of their rare earths and other critical materials to the United States. Last month, he also signed an executive order calling for the federal government to streamline, make shorter permit approvals for new mines and to encourage investments in the projects in the country. The United States, Japan, Australia and the EU are all scrambling to rebuild rare earth supply chains. But China is 20 years ahead. How will they catch up? Share with me your thoughts and leave a comment below on what you would suggest as the immediate United States strategy versus its long-term strategy for how to deal with this rare earth material crisis. Thank you so much for giving me your time today. Have a great day.